we will carry on from our last video where we went through the copy job and used a storage account to load a csv file in this video we will be creating a copy job again but we'll be using a source as sql server database azure sql to be precise we'll use a sample adventure works database and we will do use this copy job to do a full load followed by an incremental load so we'll configure it to uh, do incremental loads uh, for this to work you need a column that would work as your uh, watermark or you can say you know a column that uh, updated or uh, changed uh, incrementally so in our case let's go ahead and create that job let's connect to our azure sql database i'll copy my connection string as in the server name then the database let me go back get the database name this is my database name let's go back i'll leave that as is and use my enter account this is admin so uh, if you are having an on-prem sql server then you can use the gateway if you have configured it but in our case we are using azure sql and we have allowed access from uh, fabric so we are not using any uh, gateways inside bnet via private endpoint so we are currently connecting to the azure sql database once connected to the database you will need to choose the tables uh, the table should load here on the left side you will select the tables and also you have the option to select the columns that you want to load now from here you can select the tables that you want to ingest this is very intuitive and uh, just you know uh, mostly you will be able to go through even in your first try so it's very uh, how would i say user friendly the G, uh, the ui that is getting presented you also see the views and you can select the columns that you really want to ingest from here you can select the columns but in our case we will just leave it as is i only want to select a few tables you can go ahead and even then come back so it's not like if you moved ahead you will not be able to go back and change the settings so that option is always available even after configuring the copy job you can still go back and uh, update it change it reconfigure it and you should be able to do that without any problem map to destination again you can drop it as files as a text or delimited text file as you can see the file format delimited text also you can dump it as parquet files but in our case we want to load that directly as a delta table here you can select or do the editing of the mapping if you want to change the name and your destination or you want to change the uh, column mappings uh, the, you want to change the name of the columns you can do that as well for example if i want to go back and you know remove some tables i can still do it so this is where you will change the column names if you want to change the your data types in your destination you can do that as well let's go back and I'll go a step back to just select sales related tables so let me remove only so all I want now is just product related tables sorry not sales so I have selected all the product related tables this is just to show that you can always uh, you know only ingest what you really want select your destination that is again our uh, lake house same process just have a look review what's there and at this part of the settings the copy job mode is where you will get the option to select what kind of a load you want a full copy or an incremental copy if you see the incremental copy option uh, i have selected that and here you need to give the incremental column in our case adventure works provides you with modified date column which can be used to find the latest record so that's what we are using for our incremental load if you have a ledger based database where you only add you know uh, rows in your source then you can select the id column and you will always get the new ones this is where you will uh, do uh, the settings for the run option whether you want to run once or schedule it let's create that copy job and let it run so for the first time when it runs it will do a full load and since we have already selected the incremental column it will be able to identify 
the new records using that in our next run let it run and we will see how it goes it should run successfully and we should see all our data available in our lake house you can see the load is starting to complete and a few tables have completed and yes all five tables have been loaded in our lake house the job ran successfully uh, so let's go ahead and have a look at our lake house do a quick query and have a review of the data that was ingested uh, you can also review it from your uh, monitor hub so you from monitor hub you can see the latest run as you can see it does a full load and then then it would try to do the incremental load after the first full load let's go back to our bronze lake house let me refresh this because you know this this happens i've seen this more often uh, you will see something as unidentified whenever there is a new load new table created this is something with fabric so now you can see uh, all the tables are available we can see it in our bronze layer now in environment where you are uh, actually ingesting new records uh, you don't want to do a full load all the time that's why we did an incremental load and for that we have selected the modified date column as our incremental column so what we're going to do is we'll add a new record to uh, this Azure SQL database and then we will run our job or the copy job again and you will see it will only copy that one record that we have created and it will uh, ignore uh, it will not do a full load so let's go ahead and test that so this is uh, the Azure SQL database uh, we have the query editor open and uh, we have done a quick select just to have a look we'll now add a record we will add a new product in this particular table and once we have added that we will run the copy job and we will see how our incremental load works so let me add a new record so uh, we have currently 999 product as our sample database has so i'll just quickly add a new record and it will add a new product as product id 1000 and then we will use that to track our uh, incremental load so let me go ahead and run this row affected one so we have added a new record let me quickly check if our ingestion or up you know the record creation worked fine the insert statement let me quickly have a look let's order by our product id so we can see the latest record or you know the max of the product id that was created so that's the one that we added the azure demo bike so yeah this is created in our azure sql database and you can see the modified date is uh, the new date so what it's going to do is it's going to compare from using this incremental column and whatever in the last load had it will compare with it and it will find the new records and it will only in, uh, append those records in our destination so because we have selected append uh, currently there is no merge option or any other option uh, or update uh, absurd so in this case we will only be able to append let me run this job again and uh, it will do an incremental load and uh, the only change we have is in the product table and that product table uh, will get updated with the new record uh, with product id equals to 1000 let me quickly do a query on our uh, bronze uh, lake house and show you that that record does not exist and after the job completes we will be able to prove that the incremental load ran successfully so let me do a quickly a select top 100 and where product id equals to 1000 should uh, be fine let me quickly check what was the product id it was 1000 that's fine let's go back product id equals to 1000 and let me run that currently we do not have that data uh, as expected no record was found let's go back and see what's the status of our copy job it has just completed as you can see rows read and rows written is one so that one record that was inserted in our source and then none of the other uh, tables had any changes so you can see there is nothing to read or nothing to write let's go back and query our lake house again as you can see the new uh, record has made its way to our target uh, lake house 
and it's available there now that we have done incremental load of a new record what if an existing record gets updated what happens in that case in that case the modified date will change and it will be treated as a new record and since our copy mode is currently configured as append this new record or this new change will be appended in our lake house let's quickly go ahead and do our update statement we will be updating the same record that we just inserted let's change the name as version 2 and our product id is 1000 let's run this was affected one let me quickly go ahead and have a look you can see the name has changed but now in copy job because our copy job method or the mode is append it will find this new record this new change and it will append this entire row as a new record so you will have a duplicate of this particular id in your bronze layer we have not run the job yet so let me go back there is no change yet so let me run this after this run is completed the new record should be uh, the new record or as in the changes that we made in the source should be available as a new record even though the product id is same because obviously we have updated an existing id so it will get appended into the existing delta lake or delta table let this job complete and we should see rose red as one for sales lt product and rose written also as one job succeeded and you can see we have one uh, record that was written let's go back to our lake house and do a quick query we should have now two records for product id equals to 1000 if you go to the view section of your copy job you can see the json code for this entire pipeline you can have a look uh, and go through it uh, you can see what it records in the append section is where you will see or the incremental uh, snapshot section is where you will see which column we have you know selected for as our incremental column this is where our product table has all the uh, settings that we have uh, created during configuration you can see the modified date let's head back to our lake house let's run our query again and we should have two records for product id equals to 1000 as you can see uh, our previous version of that record exists as well as the latest version so you have two rows for the same id in these cases or in these scenarios you you can use the row number by partition by a modified date and then use that as you know to find the latest record for any particular id or you can just do a select top one let's quickly show you how you can find the latest record in these cases so it would be just a select top one and you will order by modified date descending order and you should be able to get the latest record but i hope you understood what's happening behind the scene how we are getting two records for that one particular id so if this uh, id was you know changed again and uh, our copy job found the change again in this particular product id it would append a new row with the same product id with the new changes so it's up to the developer to always fetch the latest record from these cases like in this scenario it will be up to the developer to find the latest records so you can do that by using the row number over partition by the product number because obviously it will have a you know, truck number to identify it and order by modified date uh, descending order and then select the top row number like the row, row number equals to one so you will get the latest uh, record for each id and then use that to load into your silver so that's how you would do it and if you want to just quickly find it you can use the select top, top one star from the table where product id is thousand and order by modified date this descending order and that should give you the latest record for that product id that should do it let's run that script as you can see we have this changes that was done on this product id reflecting let me quickly change this top one star to something more limited 
number of columns so you can actually see the change version 2 let me copy this yeah that should be fine you can see the name has uh, the latest record the new name for this product id has been uh, you know uh, fetched using this query so yeah that's all for today uh, this was another demo on copy job and how you can use it on a sql database be it azure sql or or your on-prem sql server to do incremental loads very intuitive very uh, user friendly just uh, a wizard and you can go through and you should be able to successfully ingest data into your lake house so i hope you found this video useful uh, thanks for watching and keep supporting